Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to this briefing on the situation in Belarus, one day after the so-called presidential elections. My name is Walter Kaufmann. I'm head of the Department on Eastern and Southeastern Europe at the Heinrich Böll Foundation in Berlin. And I'm now connected with uh, Eugenia Andriuk in Brussels. Eugenia is uh, from Brest in Belarus and currently works as an expert at the Anti-Discrimination Center of the International Network Memorial in Brussels. Hello, um, Eugenia. Hello, thank you for inviting. Eugenia, what was yesterday, what was your first reaction when you heard about the 80% that the Central Election Committee assigned to Lukashenko? Well, I didn't believe it as probably absolute majority people in Belarus. Uh, yesterday, I was participating as a volunteer in exit polls uh, here in Brussels uh, within the uh, diplomatic mission of Belarus. Uh, here have been quite a huge number of people who voted here. Uh, more than 300 people voted and came from different parts of Belgium, but also from Luxembourg. And it was really like, I was so surprised to see so many uh, my fellow countrymen uh, here. But also while I was registering the exit polls, absolute majority, 99% of people of whom I registered, they voted for Tikhanovska. I have never expected and seen so unanimous opinion. Just every person who came, um, they said that they voted for Svetlana. And absolute majority of people who voted, they also took part in exit polls. Sure, there is a small number of people, the workers of the diplomatic mission itself, but still, according to our results, more than 90 people voted for Svetlana. And the similar results of exit polls were around all the country. As for Belarus, unfortunately, there have been results of so-called national exit polls, but in Belarus, there is no independent exit polls or there is no independent sociological research. So it's basically not possible to get any information independently. However, from what we've seen, the huge queues, the huge lines of people who waited to vote, mm -hmm. I would say it was the first time in Belarus for the last 20 years. And for surely those people who were able and who were willing to stand and to wait for hours to vote, these people were not voting for Lukashenko. And also... Yeah. It was proved by a number, a number of the uh, election uh, commission, number of election commissions, they published the real results, a number of them in different cities. And in this more real, those which were fairly counted, uh, Tikhanovska also won. Again, we have seen so many um, unfree and unfair elections over the last 20, 25 years in Belarus. Um, you just mentioned so many people never went to the elections like this time. What made this election so, or what makes the situation today so particular in comparison to previous ones? Uh, I think that people now believed that it's possible to change the situation. Uh, now we have uh, more or less one unified candidate for for whom like people are voting so like all those people who are against the regime they are waiting uh, are, are voting for Svetlana but also generally the situation in Belarus changed and wasn't dramatically during the number of the during uh, the recent decades but also especially now during the COVID-19 situation when the government denied COVID-19 uh, and due to government uh, policy which intended not to take any measures to protect population. So many people uh, also like, became more politicized uh, and also took the firm stand against uh, the regime because so many people were infected and also died while indeed we also do not know the real statistics of how many people were infected and how many people uh, indeed died um, from COVID. So I would say that due to a number of factors, uh, much more people became politicized and much more people now believe that it's time for change and that like there is no other way out we should change something now has the paternalistic pattern um that the, the power of lukashenko so ma in many ways uh, was built on has it changed uh, because what you're saying probably refers or has referred for many years to a younger generation 
uh, but the elderly people, um, people living in the countryside um, and others were most almost uh, perceived as being stable supporters of Lukashenko. Has this changed in a way? Um, it's a good question indeed and it's difficult to get because there is like no independent research. However, I think that elderly uh, population also uh, got like unpleasant surprise with COVID-19 and they also, part of them also felt the situation when they absolutely vulnerable and do not have any protection from the government and also like many elderly people were uh, infected uh, for sure. While uh, indeed, I would say that uh, the majority of those people who are now participating in protests is younger generation or those people who have never been so politically interested or politically active before, but now they became. And it's probably those part of the society which really make change. And those people who now are ready and who are going out uh, to the streets out despite the threat to their lives and to their health. And I'm sure that among those people, there are quite few people who also were on the streets uh, in 2010 or 2006. I mean that now it's a lot of indeed new people who start to be like, newly mm, involved in this. But I would say that yeah, indeed it's more about younger generation. However, a number of elderly people, uh, there are a number of stories like from my friends and acquaintances who went with their grandmas to vote and who were also voting for Svetlana for some change. Regina, what do you know about the current situation in Minsk and in other cities? Is the um, information blockade that the uh, Lukashenko regime has imposed, is it working effectively? It's working unfortunately in Belarus, inside the country. So there is uh, indeed uh, internet shutdown in the country and people are not able to quickly read news and uh, learn what is going on in other cities, but also in other districts of the city. Today, for example, I talked with my friend uh, from Minsk and in their district, the electoral commission counted votes fairly and um, reported to the citizens uh, the victory of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. So the whole district were celebrating the victory and they were sure that it's in the same way all around the country. So they were sure that they won but because there were no internet. But then when they started to call, they also acquaintances and relatives. And then they, from, just from calls, they learned what is going on in the city center of Minsk, that there are huge uh, repressions and that there are fights with uh, special police units. Uh, so it's a huge problem. And uh, like, I don't have normal like, uh, contact with my family via internet. However, for people who stay abroad, but also for those people who are able to access internet via VPN, uh, more or less, uh, they have uh, connection and access to information, and I would say more or less independent media working more or less um, good, like covering all the uh, events, especially also Telegram channels of Belarusian bloggers who mainly who stay abroad and um, report in this way events. But indeed, there are very good coverage by, for example, TV, Belsat TV channel, uh, but also a number of others whom it's possible to uh, watch all the time streamline. Uh, and <clears throat> now thinking um, about the coming days and weeks, um, what scenarios seem possible? Um, will Lukashenko succeed with full repression and then um, it's like on a, it's just suppressed everything? Or what, what may happen? What do you think? Well, I think nobody knows because uh, even yesterday in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, we had never expected that uh, so many people will go uh, outside without any coordination, without any single leader in so many cities, even like in small ones, um, and will be ready to stay and to face uh, special political unions who are equipped uh, with guns uh, and uh, with bullets. Um, so it's difficult to predict what happens. So, and I think both variants are likely is that it could be the scenario that special police uh, force could suppress people uh, because uh, it seems that uh, they are using any means and they are not restricted uh, by any means. So they are, they are not afraid to kill people, unfortunately. They are not um, afraid to injure people. On the other hand, uh, I see that uh, now the Belarusian people, maybe first time in the last 20, 25 years, 
um, also are ready to face this police and are ready to fight uh, for for their votes and like for for their views for opinions to protect themselves uh, and it's uh, and it's difficult that uh, maybe people will go for for this and will keep fighting uh, with it, which it's difficult to predict how it's end when it's end and with uh, whose victories but i'm sure that even if now the government suppress the protest it will come back like in several months in a year in several years but i'm sure that uh, now we see the beginning of the end of lukashenko's regime well, thank you my last question um eugenia is um i know that you just returned from a demonstration in front of the um, Belarusian embassy in Brussels. As you are based in Brussels, what are yours and what are your colleagues' um, expectations regarding uh, the European Union? How should the European Union react? Uh, yes, yeah, so surely uh, for now we hope that uh, the EU but also all the EU states would not recognize these elections and would demand the recount of all the votes. Uh, or the reorganization of new voting uh, that would be in accordance with all the international standards. Otherwise, we also hope for imposition of uh, new sanctions. Unfortunately, if the government uh, does not change uh, its policy and if the government keep suppressing people, uh, we also for surely hope, especially from the neighboring states, neighboring EU states, that they uh, in case the situation really deteriorates, that they will be able uh, to uh, host uh, those people who will be in need of international protection and who may come uh, and who may escape uh, asking for protection. And in this case, I hope that it will be also possible to enter as asylum seekers um, urgently uh, via the border. Uh, yeah, I think that it's now the most important uh, things. And uh, I, we hope for surely very much that uh, the EU will support as much as possible uh, the strives uh, of Belarusian people. Uh, and uh, yeah, we hope for that because unfortunately, other actors in the region uh, will not support so much uh, the desires and the will of the Belarusian people. So now like it's uh, a huge hope for Belarusians. Well, thank you so much, Arginia, and all the very best for yourself and your family and your friends in Belarus. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.